In this video, we'll look at comparing the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. So the question says, a human resources manager at a company knows that 34% of the workforce belongs to a union. If she randomly selects 50 employees, what is the probability that exactly 30 of them do not belong to the union? Compare the results of using the binomial distribution with the results of using the normal approximation. Okay, well the first thing I would do before we get started is identify the P and the Q, because it's tricky here because of the word not, or the words not belong to a union. That is, we're trying to, it says, what's the probability that exactly 30 of them do not belong to the union? So our success, that is our P that we're looking for of not belonging to the union, that's what we're looking for. So you can write P is not belong to a union which in this case is it's 34 percent belong to the union so 0.66 that is 66 percent don't belong to the union our failure in this case we're looking for people who don't belong to the union so people who do belong to the union is our Q or quote unquote failure belong to union and that rate is 34 percent or 0.34 okay so Binomial distribution just says if you're looking for x equal to 30, you just use your binomial distribution, which we learned in previous unit. That's 50 people. She's surveying 50 people, and she cho we're, we're looking for 30 of them to not belong to the union. So our not belong to the union success rate happens 30 times, and our belong to union rate happens 20 times. And now we'll calculate that, it's for sure going to be rounded on the calculator, so I put a rounding dot. That's 50 choose 30 times 0.66 to the power of 30 times 0.34 to the power of 20. The calculator takes a few seconds and gets the probability is approximately zero, let's round to five decimal places, 0 0.0774 and round that last seven up to an eight. So, we can put a therefore statement, but it doesn't ask us, well, the real question is through the comparison. Let's put a therefore just in case. The therefore statement is the probability is, and move the decimal over twice for a percentage, 7.748%. What we really want to conclude on, though, is how good the normal approximation works. So how do you use the normal approximation here when it's one exact value? What we do, I'll put a little line here, is we're going to use the normal approximation and we'll say, what's the probability that you're between 29.5 and 30.5? And that will give us a good approximation of being exactly 30. But in order to do the normal approximation, we need the mean and we need the standard deviation. So let's above, we'll calculate what's the mean. We do n times p. What's n? There are 50 people being surveyed times p, 0 0.66, and we get it's 50 times 0 0.66, 33. And we want to calculate the standard deviation, which is the square root of n times p times q. That's the square root of 50 times 0 0.66 times 0 0.34, which is the square root of, that's 50 times 0 0.66 times 0 0.34, square root of 11.22, so now I'm going to round, square root, and I get, it's round to three decimals, so it comes out to 3.350, and that's our standard deviation. So I just use these formulas, which you'll have to calculate the mean and the standard deviation. Now I can do the normal approximation. But I have this range here. When I want to find between two numbers, I start with the second one. What's the probability of x being less than 30.5? That gives me everything below 30.5. I'm going to subtract off everything below 29.5, and I'll be left with everything between 29.5 and 30.5. Now let's transform them to the base normal distribution, so x minus mu over sigma, 
So let's do that. It's 30.5 minus our mean. Divide by our standard deviation, which you can just write 3.35 or 3.350. It doesn't matter now. Take away the probability of x minus mu over sigma. So that's 29.5 minus 33 over 3.35. So that's the probability that our Z score less than, we gotta go 30.5 minus 33, divide by 3.35, we get Z of round to two decimals, so that's negative 0.75. And then the second one is minus the probability of a Z score being less than 29.5, take away 33, don't forget to hit equals that you can then divide, the calculator knows to divide at the end and we need two decimals, so negative 1.04 okay, so we're going to look up this get score, this z score, and then we're going to subtract so what is the probability of being less than negative 0.75 so negative 0.75 is 0 0.2266 equals 0 0.2266 and it reminds me here I should have put a rounding dot on this line because this number here and this number here I rounded need a rounding dot there back to solving the z-score looking it up on the z-score table now I need negative 1.04 so negative 1.0 go to the 4 column that's 0.1492 so 0 0.1492 and now just subtract. What's well, 0.2266 minus 0.492, and you get 0 0.0774. And look at that; it's pretty much the same. It, it, we got 7.748. This got just had less decimals. It was less accurate, but still highly accurate. And so we can conclude the normal approximation is accurate. And so what we did there was we did looking at the binomial distribution and then looking at the normal approximation and compared the two and saw there was a high degree of accuracy.